Honorable Member for Basse. Madam Speaker, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to partake in these important debates. First of all, Madam Speaker, I want to thank the Ministry of Health and uh, the team of experts and uh, regional authority members for the commitment they are doing to control the spread of this virus, COVID-19. Equally, I want to thank the member for Serekunda for adjoining this debate yesterday to give room to the standing committee to scrutinize the demands and come up with essential information that will help us to make a decision. <coughs> Honorable Speaker, I want to thank all the members of the select committee, sorry, of the standing committee and all the subject matter specialists and the, minister, the ministers who join them and the staff of the parliament under the office of the clerk. Honorable Speaker, at this crucial moment, what parliamentarian needs is information, tangible information, because we are making decisions. And if you want to make a decision, if you are not informed, you will make a very wrong decision. At the end of the day, the entire nation will suffer. Honorable Speaker, when the Vice Chairman of the committee led the report, we were listening keenly, and uh, I made observations on the recommendation. And I want to share those observations with you. First, as they brought it, the committee recommend the assembly to approve the motion for the extension of the period of the state of public emergency table by the Honorable Attorney General and Minister of Justice. That's their number one recommendation. And number two recommendation, that the period of extension be reduced from 90 days to 45 days, and it goes on. What I want to propose to these recommendations, because these recommendations are guides, like the standing committee is guiding the parliament what to do. After doing the scrutiny, we entrusted them the information that they brought before us, that the assignment that we have given them, bring the result, and they have brought the results. But if you go further, where they say that the Ministry of Justice to further reflect some amendment in the regulations to better clarify the restriction and the provide definition they are in. So if you are told we are going by numbers, the number one is adopted. After adoption, now problems are here because we are further calling on the minister to make some amendments. And it could be among those amendments, you might be speaking the same language. For example, if you look at uh, closure and the restriction on essential public places, emergency powers regulation have under section three or close three, street or beach gathering where you have public gathering on street or beach, such as booths and the reporting activities are restricted to a maximum of five persons. My point is not there. I'm sorry, Honorable Speaker. Yes, my point is on the number. Any public gathering, not to go more than five people, I think the here is need to be revisited. 
public gathering, though, as they mentioned, there's no explanations. You don't give definitions of your terminologies. But public gathering, if it is a bring, coming together of people at one place, five people for any ceremony, I think that needs to be reconsidered. Being a naming ceremony, being a, a funeral, being whatsoever, if it is a public gathering, it should not go more than five, I think that needs to be reviewed. So therefore, those could be recommendations that we are waiting for. And the further, they said that finance and economic affairs and the relevant line ministry, health, trade, tourism, transport, interior, to work with the Attorney General and the Minister for Justice to come up with a compulsory mechanism to provide some relief package the most vulnerable during the times of restriction. I think this uh, is a very important recommendation. And this recommendation to me, this will be clarified first before we do any further action. So therefore, I want to propose that the number one recommendation be the committee advise the Minister of Justice to clarify the assembly. To clarify to the assembly the reason that led to the declaration of the second proclamation and non-applicability of the 21 days duration of the first proclamation as the National Assembly was in session. This will be the recommendation number one to me. First of all, we want to know what is the rationale behind this declaration. And second, that the Minister of Justice to further reflect on amendments in the regulations to better clarify the restriction and provide definition they are in. This will be the second recommendation. We now know the rationale behind the declaration. Now, after knowing the rationale behind the de declaration, the amendments that should or that should the situation, those amendments should be provided. of restriction. This will be recommendation number three, because all these are creating room to get more information to make our decision. And the recommendation number four will be now the committee recommend the assembly to approve the motion for the extension of the period of the state of public emergency tabled by the Honorable um, uh, Attorney General and the Minister of Justice. Before, before coming to four, the three recommendations will help us now to get all the necessary information that we want. And in fact, that was my thought, that after tabling these reports, these recommendations, the ministers will come and clarify issues before we go to the proper debate. Because if you debate, we take decision, and then they come and clarify it, what will be the essence of that clarification? It is not helping us. That was my thoughts. But nonetheless, I can propose it in this way if we can proceed on this way. And the recommendation number five will be now the period for extension be reduced from 90 days to 45 days. After taking a decision now, we'll come now to the period. Which period to adopt, if you have to adopt? Are you going for 90 days? No, it's too much. Let's go for 45 days. But why? The rationale behind it should be known. You know, I think by now, we should get the assessment of that one week declaration. What happened? And what were the, the impacts, the social impact? What was the economic impact? On the side of education, what was the impact? By now, I thought all the ministries or all the ministers should be ready to give us an assessment that when the president made the declaration from the day one up to seven day, looking holistically at the, situ the situation of the country, this is what we observe. That will help us whether to further continue or not to continue. 
But as of now, we don't have information. We are working in ambiguity, and I'm very sorry. And as parliamentarian, we need to be very careful. Because any decision that we are making here is the nation that is deciding, because we are representing the nation. So those ambiguities, to me, should be cleared first. If we are cleared with all ambiguities, by then, we have the ground to make a decision. And that decision will be, um, will, will be, will, will be, um, uh, will shoot the entire nation. And my recommendation number six, if you turn the page to page five, to me, um, number 23 uh, shouldn't be an observation, but to me, it should be a recommendation. The committee, or uh, the committee was of the opinion that commercial business businesses should not be totally banned. Rather, the regulation should only restrict their closing and opening time. This should be a recommendation, to my understanding, because that's where where that's where the problem is. Essential commodities non-essential commodities. To me, there's no non-essential commodities. All commodities are essential because we need them. Any commodity that you need is essential. Maybe not to you, but to somebody. Maybe what you call for commercial a, 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 a commodity, what you refer to on essential commodity, maybe somebody is getting its gain after that to get the, um, the the, the essential commodity. So therefore, if that is totally banned, it's going to create a problem again. And before coming here, a girl came from Basia Market and met me in Sabi in my office. She came with her commodities, that these are non-essential commodities, which me I am fed on. Now it has been banned. What can I do now? You are our representative. Can you guide me? Can you help me? And the children are at home. I should feed them. Where I'm going to get my money now? We have work on an alternative. And I think if it happened to me, it may happen to all of you. One day or the other, you may receive somebody who will tell you, please help me, I will guide me. So I think it is important at this crucial moment to think of such. Rather than closing them totally, so there should be time for closing and time for opening. That's why I don't want to see it in, on the observation. I want you to bring it on the recommendation. Uh, it will be recommendation number six. And the recommendation number seven um, uh, will be the point, the, the, uh, the number 20, where he said the committee requires whether any measures is in place to ensure public awareness of the regulations and their implications. Honorable Minister for Justice replied, stated that the Solicitor General has been conducting TV program on GRTS to that effect. However, the committee advised the Minister to use the services of honorable members as well as, as well in such in such ventures. This, this, this should be a recommendation. Information is key. GRTS within Combo is fine. Maybe those who also went to school is fine because you are talking about solicitor general here. What are the medium of communication that they are using? And you just mentioned only GRTS. Is the only mean of communication in this country? that people are relying on to get information, if that's not the case. So therefore, I think all the channels that are used to pass on information could be used. But the national languages also of the country could be also used, so that the entire population will get the information at the same time. If you are not informed, you'll be deformed. People are not informed. That's why they are having any kind of thoughts about this, uh, uh, how to call it again, about this, uh, a state of public emergency going to 90 days. Yesterday, I think most of you didn't sleep. You are receiving calls about this issue because of the concept they got about it. They were not clear about it, the information. So therefore, I think this also should be a recommendation that the executive 
use all the media houses, use all the national languages to speak to the Gambian people so that they will understand the decision that we are about to make. It is for their interest. Even something is for your interest, if you don't have correct information about it, you may not take it seriously. And the member for Tumana is saying here that still there are people who didn't believe it. And the particular community in Jimara, the member for Jimara is here. They didn't believe in it. Even though the case is in, the, in this entire community, people have to intervene in different manners to make them to believe in it. So if, do you think if actually the communication was going through, so that everybody was receiving the same communication at the same time, I think those ambiguities will, go, will be the thing of the past. So therefore, it is important to have it as a, a recommendation. Honorable Speaker, these are a few recommendations, so a few observations that uh, I uh, make. Uh, I want to thank uh, the, select, the Standing Committee uh, on Human Rights and the Constitutional Matters for assuring us that uh, the documents or the, pro uh, the um, motion has taken the due process of the law. On that note, I want to thank you.